With the economic instability of the United States caused by the Great Depression, it was decided to carve a large memorial to promote tourism. The main sculptor, Golzun Borglum, and 400 workers began work on the colossal carving in October 1927. The first to be carved was George Washington on the far left. George Washington was the first President of the United States of America. He was elected in 1789 and led the colonists in the American Revolutionary War to win independence from Great Britain. Thomas Jefferson's head was started next, to the left of Washington. When the sculpture was half completed, the quality of the rock became so poor that it was blasted off the mountain. It was then started again on the right-hand side. Jefferson was the primary author of the Declaration of Independence. The next sculpture to be worked on is on the far right, depicting Abraham Lincoln. Lincoln held the nation together during the Civil War. Lincoln believed his most sacred duty was the preservation of the Union. It was his firm conviction that slavery must be abolished. The last sculpture, second from the right, is Theodore Roosevelt. At only 42 years of age, he became the 26th President of America. As you can see, the sculpture is set much further back than the others. This was because of poor rock quality. Take a close look at Roosevelt, even his glasses are present. Welcome to the Mount Rushmore National Memorial. The presidential trail starts at the Grand View Terrace and travels through the forest, offering different views of the president's heads. The pupil of each eye has a 20-inch cube of granite inserted to make the appearance of the eyes more realistic. You can also see the remains of the granite waste from the blasting with dynamite, which was used for 90% of the work. For the remainder, drills, chisels and hammers were used. In 1938, behind the heads of Lincoln, Borglum and his crew began to carve the Hall of Records, where he envisaged the original Declaration of Independence and the United States Constitution should eventually be stored. They had reached 70 feet into the granite by March 1941, when Borglum unexpectedly died. With his loss and the lack of funding, the monument was deemed complete and all work was shut down on October 31, 1941.